It's not necessary. It's stupid. Uh, it's what small block Chevy guys do. You know, it's old technology, whatever. You don't need a double roller. So one thing I see all the time online is guys, LS guys, bashing the double roller timing sets for LS. You know, they say, I need a double roller. You can do the K-Tech chain, the IWIS chain, or IWIS, whatever. Uh, and that's all you'll ever need, you know. And that might be so far as the chain's concerned. The chain may be strong enough and good enough and pre-stretched or uh, just whatever. You know, it's a, it's a good piece. I'm not saying it isn't. But if you buy an aftermarket uh, timing set with a single roller and you know reasons to do that may be that you need to adjust your cam timing you know you don't want to just put it in dot to dot and assume or maybe you did put it in and degreed it and you see that you need to advance it or retard it so you buy a single roller uh, adjustable set because the internet says double rollers are stupid and yes it is more work to do a double roller you have to space your oil pump out it comes with spacers you have to grind on your timing cover, uh, depending on what you have stock cover, you're gonna have to uh, grind on it. So yes, it's more work. But what I'm gonna show you is, if you look at the gear for an adjustable single versus an adjustable double, you can see that the double is much thicker. And you might think, well, why would that matter? You know, the key's still going to hold it. It's got key slots in it, right? See all the key slots? Well, if you walk over here and look at the engine, you can see that the key, let's see here. You see the key don't go all the way back. So what ends up happening is that single roller is grabbing a hold of about that much key. That's all that's keeping it from spinning and you know if it spins you lose control of your cam timing obviously uh, the gears pressed on but it still obviously needs to be keyed so um, you can see on this crankshaft this is a Lenati signature series crank you can see that there's three different sections you know basically the diameter out here is just a little smaller than here and so on here and this is where your timing gear would ride uh, if you had a factory gear you know, the part that drives the oil pump's all made to it. So, of course, it's engaging a lot of key. And, of course, this key is abnormal. I'll get to that in a second. But basically what happens is if you run that single roller and you've got, you know, a normal application, you know, the aftermarket set we're talking about, it'll probably be fine. But if you've got a two-step, you know, turbo car spooling, banging on two-step, you know, if you just generally bang on the rev limiter and abuse the crap out of your car, it's going to beat this key slot out of the gear. It's going to beat the key up. And eventually your cam timing's not going to be what you thought it was because everything's so wore out. And at some point it might even spin or just strip it off. So double rollers are good for that reason, if only that reason. Um, if you have to use an aftermarket lower gear for cam advance purposes. So, <clears throat> something weird about this crank, as you can see, their key slot for the balancer, which you don't have to key your balancer depending on the application, stock didn't, but we always like to so that you can put a timing pointer on there and, you know, balancer stays in place it's it's keyed to the crank so you know that you can verify timing at any point in the future <clears throat> and not worry about the balancer have you know being 
in a different location because it slipped on the crank hub a little bit. So with this crank, they put the key slot out of line with the timing gear, which is, like I said, strange. Not sure why it's that way, but when we took it out of the box, this is what we found. And of course, this is a crank that I've had for years. We bought it for a build, never used it for whatever the reason, and finally found you know a home for it here. Uh, this is Troy Klutz engine. Uh, getting it together now finally but anyway we cut the keyway all the way out so instead of having a little short uh, indentation for the factory uh, timing key and then another even smaller indentation for a key like you see here we just machined it all the way to the end and then you see that I've got key sticking out here and you probably think well that's stupid you know why would you do that well i've measured the height of everything and somewhere about 50 thousandths beyond this key is where the actual end of the balancer hub would be and that's where the bolt the bolt is going to be just beyond where this key's sitting right now and the reason i did that is because at one point in time on a previous engine for a customer it had a key that was just like this. It was a Winberg crank, and this is actually how it was made. It, it had one key slot all the way out. And the key that was in it was trimmed flush with the end of the crank because, you know, that, that would be, that make sense. You know, of course, you put a, a bolt in it right now to turn the engine or you put your uh, degree wheel on it or whatever. This kind of, you know, makes things a little more difficult. But it was cut, you know, flush. And what had happened is after a few seasons of racing, the key actually worked its way out. There was no, you know, stop to the end of the crank to keep it from coming out. So it just gradually worked its way out until it came out from under the timing gear because it was an aftermarket gear, uh, adjustable gear set, timing set. And then, of course, the car kept running, but it had all kinds of crazy weird issues, hurt some valves. Uh, not because it bent them, but because it tuliped them, you know, because cam time became super retarded, I guess, is the direction it was trying to go. So anyway, uh, that just explains why this looks really weird and strange, but uh, it serves a purpose. But main point of the video was why double rollers for LS engines aren't as stupid as everybody makes them out to be. I uh, hope you got something out of this video. I'll be posting more, you know, cool tech videos in the future. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments um, or shoot us a message at jacompetition.com. Thanks for watching.